Hello, I'm Aminta Dawson with the ACES staff. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar entitled Querying Wikidata, All the Knowledge in the World, sponsored by DCMI. Our distinguished presenter is Dr. Daniel Garjillo Verdejo, and he'll be introduced by our moderator, Dr. Inkyung Choi. Dr. Inkyung Choi is a teaching assistant professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Her research interest stems from her intellectual curiosity about social and cultural pluralistic perspectives, which influence ways of organizing knowledge. She also serves at the DCMI Education Committee. I'd like to ask the audience to type your questions into the question panel box and they'll be answered at the end of the presentation. I will now turn the session over to Dr. Inkyung Choi, who will introduce our presenter. Okay. Thank you, Aminta. Um, and then thank you everyone for joining today's uh, webinar. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'll start uh, just right with the introduction of Dr. Daniel Garjillo Berdejo. Berda, Berdejo. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was trying. But yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Daniel, uh, for joining us. Um, Dr. Daniel Garjillo Verdejo is a distinguished researcher at the Ontology Engineering Group uh, of the uh, Universidad Univers Politecnica de Madrid. Previously, Correct. yeah, thank you. He held a research computer scientist position at the Information Science Institute of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Um, Daniel's research uh, activity focused on e-science and knowledge capture, including knowledge graph, specifically on how to increase the uh, understandability of a research software and scientific workflows by creating knowledge graph uh, from their documentation and provenance. Um, Daniel is also part of the Knowledge Graph Toolkit team, designing tooling for consuming and operating with a large knowledge graph like Wikidata, which, you know, like Daniel uh, addressed today at webinar. So in this webinar, he will demonstrate how heterogeneous facts are represented in Wikidata and how to retrieve them by using standard query languages and tools designed by the Wikidata community. So yeah, Daniel, now it's your, um, it's your new show. So please, um, yeah, please feel free to start. Um, thank you very much uh, for the introduction, Inkyun and Aminta. Um, otherwise, I would not be here today. I would like to start by saying that um, the talk that I'm going to be giving today is heavily based on a tutorial that we, together with Professor Pedro Sekely at uh, the Information Science Institute, uh, we created for the Knowledge Capture Conference in 2019. I have updated some of the examples and the scope of the presentation is for it to be interactive. So I hope that you have a copy of the slides with you so you can follow some of the examples that I have put in there uh, for you to enjoy. So um, I'm going to be introducing a little bit what Wikidata is for those who don't know uh, Wikidata and how uh, data is organized under the Wikidata data model. I'm also going to show you a very interesting cheat sheet uh, for you to perform queries so you can actually retrieve the data and all the interesting facts from Wikidata um, step by step. And well, I'm, I'm going to be showing you through queries how to do this, right? So since I only have 45 minutes, um, I want to uh, get into the detail as soon as possible. So let me start by telling you a little bit about the goals of the Wikidata project. Wikidata. Uh, it's basically a free collaborative multilingual secondary database, I'll explain what this is later, collecting structured uh, data to provide support for Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons and the other uh, Wiki wikis that exist in the Wikimedia movement. And what is more important is that it's open to anyone in the world. So basically you can start today contributing to Wikidata yourself. Why do I like Wikidata or rather why do I love Wikidata? Uh, first of all, it's free, <laughs> so um, for us researchers it's an incre incredibly uh, powerful source of knowledge. All the information that is there is under a CC0 license, which means that everyone is able to consume it without having to credit, even credit the, the original source. It's collaborative, which is a very a big distinction with other knowledge graphs where, I don't know, maybe Google or maybe other big company creates a knowledge graph and uh, 
and sometimes they open it to the community, sometimes they don't, but in many cases what you have to do is just rely on what they produce and you have no say in the final product, right? But with Wikidata, um, you can, you can, if you see an error, you can just go and change it yourself, right? I've done this many times. It's multilingual and um, by this uh, they provide an interesting structure for um, naming entities in a way that you can describe them in any language. It's a secondary database. By this it means that it's the point of entry to many other databases because you have the equivalences of their identifiers in Wikidata. So for example, if you go to a city such as Los Angeles or Madrid, you will see um, uh, a specific section in that page uh, stating which identifiers this uh, entity has in other knowledge bases. It collects all the data in a structured manner um, uh, that is in a knowledge graph, it supports now an increasing amount of Wikimedia wikis. In fact, Wikipedia, some of the facts from Wikipedia come from Wikidata now and it's open for anyone in the world. Even though there are some restrictions on uh, what people can edit. For example, if there is a page that may be, or an entity that is maybe polemic, only certain editors may edit it. Um, but in general, most of the data and most of the typos are open for everyone to fix them if you, if you want. Also, they produce uh, regularly in a weekly basis, Sparkle, um, JSON and RDF dumps that, are, um, that can be consumed by the community. So why Wikidata versus other knowledge graphs? I wanted to emphasize this because it's one of the things that I like the most. It has good data in general. It provides uh, qualifiers, which if you see, well, this is not Wikidata itself, but it's a visualization based on Wikidata. I think this is a, a squid or a resonator, one of, one, either one of those. Um, and you can see that for each entity, for example, this is for Marina del Rey, which has this identifier, this Q node. So you have the properties here and the values of the properties, but you have more information apart from the values. So for example, for the elevation above C, you have the units already here. For the population, you have the point in time when this population was affected, right? This is very, very important information when you are actually using a resource. If you don't tell me the point in time when uh, you have the population of this resource, of, of this entity, then it may be worthless for some people. And also it has these ex external identifiers, which relies to, um, it, it relates to the external uh, pointers in external databases that I was mentioning before, right? So you can see that, I don't know, that in GeoNames or Freebase ID, it was this ID, in the Library of Congress, this is known as this entity, and so on and so forth. So you can go to these databases and extract additional information. Also, it has a lot of data. There are nearly 100 million items uh, in Wikidata, and there are over 6,000 properties with an ontology of over 2 million classes, which is a lot. <laughs> if you want to navigate this, uh, well, brace yourselves. And um, well, this amount of data, it's uh, very clearly defined with uh, over 15 billion triples, which, and, uh, which work among a Sparkle endpoint that works really, really well. So uh, as we can, as we will see in a month. And, what is important, as, as I was saying, is, is that it in general has more data than in other knowledge graphs. For example, comparing Wikidata with Wikipedia, sorry, we, uh, DBpedia, which is another knowledge graph based on Wikipedia, on Wikipedia. Um, this is an example of an American bicycle racer where, where here you basically have all the information uh, when uh, this person was in each of the racing teams. And, well, you see that all the point in time is additionally here. However, in DBpedia, it doesn't have this information because it doesn't have the qualifiers, right? The qualifiers are all these additional statements talking about the statements. And without that, the, well, you get less information. It also um, has this notion of multilinguality. So, uh, for example, again, with DBpedia, you have the Spanish DBpedia, the English DBpedia, the Italian chapter of DBpedia. And here in Wikidata, there is only one, there is only one big knowledge graph that has all the annotations in all the languages. And well, and for some of the languages, 
maybe it doesn't exist. You can see that here, well, maybe for Marina del Rey in in Basque, there is no description in, in that language associated with this item. That's completely fine. But you can see that you can jump from language to language and see which descriptions are provided for each item. As you can see that the same ID is used for all languages. So now we don't have the problems or finding which items in one knowledge graph belongs to an, an item in another knowledge graph. And um, how does these all get related together? Well, this goes with the Wikidata data model. Just to start with an example, the information is represented in triples. I'm sure that many of you that uh, are looking at, at this talk today are familiar with, with triples and, and how to represent the information with them. So basically there are items, there are properties and there are values, right? And you can have an item property item such as George W. Bush is uh, the position held was the president of the United States. And there are values which may be Harry Truman, date of birth, 1884, right? And you can see that um, we also have some other arrows are uh, spanning from, from edges themselves, which are the qualifiers, but I'm going to leave that for later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe that a little later because it's an additional level of complexity. But basically, well, they, they represent everything with triples, and this is what a page looks like. This is the example that it's always used when talking about Wikidata, which is the page about Douglas Adams, which has the item identifier, identifier the QNode Q42. This is a little bit of a joke in this case because Q42 is in, in one of his uh, Douglas Adams books, is like the answer um, to the meaning of life. Right, and it's just a number, and that's that's why they wanted to maybe pay a little homage to to this author. And I'm going to go by one by one by one by one, sorry, explaining what all these things are. So you have the Q node, which is the item identifier. You have the label. In this case, it's displayed in English. But uh, if you are browsing your um, uh, this item from another uh, place and in another language, it will be displayed to your language. Then you have the descriptions and aliases, the, the aliases are other names by which this entity may be known, which is very useful for disambiguation issues. And then you have the, uh, the triple itself, right? So the subject is the, the Q node, the entity, Q42 in this case. Um, the property is educated at, which can be seen, and the value is St. John's College, right? So, so far, SPO, subject property, object or value, um, very easy. And then you have the qualifier properties and the qualifier values for each of these triples, for each of these statements. In this case, you are saying that there are like four qualifiers for, for the St. John's College value, uh, uh, sorry, Q42 educated at St. John's, St. John's College, which means that it, that Douglas Adams started studying there between 1971 until 1974 and the degree and major that he was studying. In addition, you get the, uh, the references and the ranking that uh, is associated with this statement. The references are crucial for provenance. So in this case, there are two references associated with these uh, triples. And you can see here, basically, the reference URL. It's additional qualifiers for the reference itself. And finally, the qualifier, which is um, uh, represented by the, only these three arrows here. I think this has been implemented in, this has been improved in the latest uh, versions of Wikidata. It's not so small, but basically you have three different ranks. Um, a triple can be the uh, normal, which is as it is right now. It can be preferred or it can be deprecated. Why, why something may be deprecated? Well, uh, you may want to assert in science that uh, the community believed something until a point in the, in, in the history of humankind. For example, I think the, the example that we're gonna see later is Pluto. Pluto used to be a, a planet, but stop being a planet in uh, sorry about this. Uh, but stop being a planet in 2009, right? And then you you may have a preferred ranking. For example, if you have several triples that have the same source, the same property, and different values, such as population. If you want to have that your the population of Marina del Rey, uh, the preferred one is the latest one. 
then you may assert that the one in 2022 is the one that uh, we consider truth to be, uh, well, not true, but truthy <laughs> to be so, so far. All right, so now I'm going to be digging into the Wikidata data model. And um, the, sorry, not the data model itself, the, the schema first. And Wikidata has a crowdsourced ontology, that's why it's huge. It doesn't use um, directly the, the uh, all uh, the typical all you know all instance of and uh, subclass of properties instead they have defined their own properties which follow their own notation right properties follow then uh, the p notation which is p and a number so instance of is p31 and uh, instances or q nodes follow the q notation which is the q and a number so in this case uh, what will happen if we click on human well that we would go to the uh, human page and human the class is a q node so this is one of the first distinctions that we see between typical and, on, and typical ontology in, in refs or in well no in refs or in all um, because entities can be both classes and instances at the same time they are everyone everything is an item and it can be further described as an instance of something else so, for example, human is a subclass of every uh, uh, person, natural person, an omnivore, and is an instance of group of organisms known uh, by one particular common name, which may be taken from probably some of the categories in Wikipedia. Um, as you can, as you may expect, there are over two million classes. In fact, well, this is taken in 2019, but I know that it has been growing, so it may be closer to a three million right now. Um, and this is, uh, you can explore all this taxonomy with the P279 property, which is subclass of. And uh, we checked and over 60,000 classes have instances. So some of them may only be there for organizational purposes, which is usually not a great practice. Um, but uh, in the end, there are over 60,000 classes which have instances. Some of them have millions of instances. For example, human has as you may imagine, millions of instances, right? And now if you look at scholarly article, I think there are tens of millions of scholarly articles in Wikidata. And to check this, you only need to check the P31, right? This is a little bit of the taxonomy of human where you can also see uh, some of the instances of each uh, class. What about properties? Well, guess what? Properties are also, uh, they, they also have their property pages, but they are with the P notation and they are redirected to a page described in a way that is described as uh, classes would be described, right? Or any, inst any instance would be described, but um, they just have this special notation. And uh, properties are actually very well defined. They all have, uh, this, this is the one for inception, for example. And I think, uh, as you can see here, it is highlighted, no, but um, if you can see here, all the properties um, have, uh, they have a type, like this is a time property, and they have their own hierarchy. So you can say that a property is a sub property of another property. This is different from P279, of course. And they also have restrictions. For example, a domain restriction and a range description can be. Uh, can be added for each of the properties. It's also quite uh, interesting because not only they can have restrictions, that is constraints, but they also may have exceptions to these constraints, which actually describes a quite of a powerful model to, to describe restrictions. And what else about properties? I think I think this is it in a nutshell. It's they are very, very detailed, and uh, well, validating them is another question. <laughs> Um, this is uh, an example, well, it's an overview of the types of properties that um, you can find. It's a little bit outdated uh, because I, I know that now there are nearly uh, double the external identifiers. External identifiers are usually used for those properties that says, oh, by the way, this is an item that it has uh, this particular uh, 
uh, it comes from this particular data set with this particular value. So it's used basically to link external resources to Wikidata. And, uh, but most of the items is uh, Wikibase item properties and quantities and strings, which are for values, right? And then you have a little bit of geo shapes, which is very cool because you can start drawing polygons and so on, and uh, mathematical equations and so on. So modeling data and Wikidata in practice, we are close to getting started now with some of the queries, which I think is, is what is useful and also the challenges, right? So now it comes to the time where, where we have to talk about the qualifiers. That is, the uh, we, we talked before about subject, property and values, right? But how do we actually represent this in REF? And uh, the thing is that we these qualifiers, as I was saying, are also very useful to represent things such as deprecated statements. This is part of the ranking uh, representation. And this is back to the example that was, I was mentioning um for representing triples such as whether pluto is a planet so until 2006 it was a planet and after 2006 it's a trans neptunian object so thanks to this representation we can do this in wikidata and in evolving fields of science such as astronomy you'd see that many things have been deprecated because well science evolves right and this is the uh, the, the model that we actually use for uh, representing full statements in Wikidata. On the left of, on the left side, you can see that this is the SPO, the, the subject property and value that actually describes a single triple in Wikidata. On the right side, it's all the reification mechanism that is uh, drawn to actually provide additional information for each statement. It's a little bit overwhelming, so I'm not, I'm not, instead of explaining it in detail over here, what I'm going to do is try to go over it with examples. But in a nutshell, this big box over here is the reification of this statement. And then you have uh, all the qualifiers and all the references with the respective qualifiers. And over here is just additional information to represent the ranking. That is whether a triple is uh, preferred or, um, or well, or it's deprecated or it's normal. And uh, you can see that each of these uh, properties they have a different namespace. So what this means is that the property that we are using, the depending on the namespace that we use in this in the different query we are going to get a different value and i'm going to show this with examples so don't worry so instead of spending a lot, a lot of time there let me jump in to the, the directly to the examples right and here is where i'm going to try to pace myself a little bit because i think it's one of the coolest thing about the presentation i try to make sure that um uh, all these uh, all the queries that i'm going to be showing are going to have a uh, small urls so you can uh, play with them yourself if you're interested even after the presentation right and this is usually the part where some interaction is is actually um uh, better because sometimes well when i teach this to my students they are like oh yeah but why why do we see this here or why why i don't understand this part or whatever so if there are any questions from the audience from any of the queries um i'll be happy to just stop by a few minutes and explain something if it's not very clear okay so the first thing is just talking a little bit about the endpoint the endpoint is query.wikidata.org and uh, I have been very, very impressed in the past with this endpoint. I'm, I'm still impressed with it because it's uh, it's very, very fast for the for the amount of data that they have. It's 15, uh, 1,500 uh, million triples, so 1.5 billion triples. It's a lot. There are no name graphs or reasoning that are allowed over these. Uh, um, over the endpoint. So if you want to retrieve something, you have to query it yourself. And it, you can query not super fast, but uh, quite fast and with queries that are of significant size. For example, once I retrieve all the labels from all the humans and I was able to retrieve the answer uh, from the Wikidata endpoint, it took a little bit, but come on, that's like 2 million results. No, sorry, 5 million results or so. So 
Um, I don't know if that was the exception, but um, it works really, really well. The things where it doesn't work that well is when you start bringing taxonomy reasoning, so very expensive, very, very expensive queries, such as, oh, I want like to retrieve all the instances of these uh, classes and their parents while exploring for the branching out to these other properties. Those queries are a little bit more expensive. So basically, the, you also have a lot of examples in the uh, Sparkle endpoint. And if you are not proficient in Sparkle and you want to request a query, there is a page where you can do this. So you can go here and ask for help to the community. They are quite responsive. All right, so let's start. Uh, oh, no, sorry, not start yet. Uh, additional features of the Sparkle endpoint. So another thing that they have is um, auto-completion. So since we have to use these Q nodes all the time for retrieving additional information of the entities, they have an auto-completion feature that will, that will help you actually, uh, well, use uh, different statements, uh, different refer to different entities in, uh, in the Sparkle endpoint. So sometimes if I don't, um, if I don't want to search for a given Q node, I can just put the label, and with the label, I, I will get Q65, and then using Q65 here, it tells me, oh, yeah, it's uh, Los Angeles, which is the Los Angeles city that you're looking for. And we are going to be uh, doing this for, for many of the examples. So um, everything is available in JSON, in Turtle, in JSON LD, and they also uh, have some means to, to to actually how to embed the snippet of the query in your favorite query language. If we have time, I'll show you how to do this. Bear in mind that everything, as I was saying, in Wikidata is an entity. So classes, properties, and instances, they are entities themselves. And that if we don't use RDF type, it's P31, and subclass, two, subclass of is P70P279. RDFS domain and range are of type constraint type, which is called type and value type constraints. Usually, um, well, this is not super, super important. And that there are some design decisions when people have modeled the knowledge graph, um, in particular with regard to the professions. So for example, in uh, other knowledge graphs, such as DBpedia, you will see that Barack Obama is an instance of present. Here, that doesn't happen that way. Barack Obama, Barack Obama is an instance of a human, and he had the position of being president between a certain range of time. So a um, final thing that you can have is that uh, there are some service-based um, utilities which are very useful. So if you don't want to use the properties they have for label, um, well, which label in this case is RDFS label, or or for add label or description, you can use this uh, service, which is Wikibase label service. And uh, just by retrieving the language you are interested in, um, if you want, for example, the label associated with the object, uh, it will be retrieved with, by this uh, very simple you know, mechanism, right? So you, you put the object and label afterwards or add label and you'll get something like these results. Like, oh yeah, but it's the United States, um, this is the label that we can see in English, and then these are alternative labels, that, that is the aliases, and finally a description. And you also have um, a query service for uh, geospatial information, which is quite useful. And uh, this is an example that, for example, show, that for instance shows um, all the airports that are within a radius of 100 kilometers of Marina del Rey. No, sorry, um, of Los Angeles. And uh, a query that is very interesting, no? Because it's it's actually retrieving things from locations. Uh, it's using um, the, the radius and it's, uh, it's filtering only airports. This is very common usually uh, to filter things, which is uh, give me all the things that are instance of or subclass of any airport, right? Because, um, I don't know, maybe there is there are naval bases that are types of airports and you want to cover all that in your query. Um, so very useful. This one may be a little heavyweight though, um, so you may want to uh, be patient and, and be as uh, specific as possible when, when requesting for things. All right, so let's go back to the cheat sheet, and this is what I'm going to be using for all these queries. Um, my recommendation is that if you start doing your own queries to Wikidata, 
that you have this in front of you because it's extremely extremely useful and to my surprise it took me quite a little bit of time until i found it with within the documentation it was not trivial for me so the first thing that we are going to do is um, i wanted to show all the all the cheat sheet step by step right so uh, let's start with a simple question such as who is the governor in los angeles los angeles is q65 because we know this because uh, i've already uh, done it for you and among all the things with the reification statements right now we are asking for the truthy statement the truthy statement is the one that gives me the latest value. There may have been other governors in the past, but the truth is the one that um, I am just worried uh, at the moment is that it, by default, this is the response that Wikidata would give me. Usually it, it translates to the latest one. So in this case, if we click on this query, um, I'm not going to click on this query at the moment because, well, there is time, but I would rather spend some time um, on a little bit more complex query. So uh, you have the query here, you just click on it and it will be already uh, ready for you in Wikidata. And you can see if you click on execute that the result will be Eric Garcetian, that this is the, um, the node for Eric, right? So. If you want to start asking more interesting questions, such as how long has the governor been in office, then you have to start doing, look at the cheat sheet and go through the path that uh, tackles that, that uh, qualifier. In this case, the start time, this is something that you need to look at, of course, start time is the P580 uh, uh, property. Uh, so we know that governor is P6, Right, so uh, we start here, which uh, Los Angeles, uh, P6 is governor of, or head of state, I think, and that retrieves us this statement, and since we want the start time and only the value of the start time, then we use the PQ namespace to get the qualifier value, which is the start time, and in this case, it's 1st of July of 2013. If, uh, so I can click here, this here, and I hope that you can uh, that you can see my screen properly. Um, if not, please do let me know. But you can see, well, the, the query is loaded and I click on, on this over here. And um, it actually, it is adapting the, the response to the language and that it's in Spanish, but you can change it here, right? Uh, you can change the language to English if you want and uh, select, oops, oh, I don't know why this, I just drag and drop and I apologize, this is not my machine. So um, this is uh, quite interesting. And actually, uh, this is if you want to embed this in your, I don't know, in, in your uh, Jupyter notebook, you can see, OK, well, here's how you actually do this query in Python. So you can get the results uh, very easily from what uh, we have seen in this query. All right, I'm going to continue moving on. Um, Right, so what if now you want to find more information about the qualifier itself, right? Because you can see it's telling me um, 1st of July of 2013, but what happens if, um, I don't know, um, maybe I'm, I'm using biological time and this has a completely different meaning. So I need to know that I'm, I want to make sure that this is the Gregorian calendar and by doing a very simple query, in this case, going through the P6 to go to the statement and then using the PQB uh, a prefix to go to the qualifier node of the qualifier and getting this additional information, then I'll be able to retrieve all the information about the, the time value that is being represented. So in this case, it's telling me the precision, it's telling me the calendar model, it's telling me the time zone in case this is available, and the, the calendar model probably, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to click on, on this, come on. Uh, so uh, yeah, the time, yeah. There it is. And if I click on here, it's going to take me to the Gregorian, Proletic Gregorian calendar page because that's the one I'm using. And I'm actually looking here that they have created a new query. Uh, this is like a, a new query uh, 
a builder that I had not seen before. So probably this is even easier than doing everything in Sparkle, right? Because you can you can play around with. But let's not improvise, and I'm going to go back to uh, the slides themselves. So the bottom line is that you can even ask these very uh, intricate and complicated things about the qualifiers themselves, right? This is something that, to my knowledge, has not been done in in, in other public knowledge graphs, I think at least within the linked open data cloud with with so much support. All right, so now let's do another interesting thing, which is let's let's retrieve a ranking, um, like uh, let's review the population in Los Angeles. So if you do, if you use the WDT, population is 1082. Uh, so if you use the WDT, which stands for Truthy, it's going to take you only to the latest result, which is this number over here. However, if you want to see what are all the populations in, El in Los Angeles across time, you need to ask for the, the rank that is associated with the statement, the statement value and also ask for the value of that qualifier. So you need to use the PS prefix, as you can see here, <coughs> Sorry. So WDQ65 stands for Los Angeles, 1082 is population, and PS, PS is the statement node. And, and next, we use the PS with the same because it's the population, that is this R over here, to get the value that basically we are retrieving, not this, we are retrieving all the statements because this is the, there is only one of these, this is the, like the latest one. Um, so we are retrieving all the statements that are associated with Los Angeles and also we are retrieving the rank. This is actually pretty interesting, so I'm going to click in here and uh, we are going to order it by year. So if you click and you execute the, uh, the query and you scroll down, now see, you, uh, you can see that six, since uh, 15 1850, you can see the evolution of the population in Los Angeles, right? And you can see, well, uh, at some point, uh, there are some, some things that may be a little weird, right? For example, um, there, are more, there is more population in 2018 than in 2020. Well, uh, we would have to, if we don't actually believe this, we would have to check the references. Also, interestingly, um, the normal rank is associated with this one, it should be associated with the latest one. So as you can see, well, Wikidata, um, uh, well, sometimes it has some weird, weird things like this one, right? I don't know, sorry, sorry, it, it's, it's the last one. So it's normal rank and the preferred rank is associated with the latest one, which um, it has, it is from 2020 and uh, January 2020. So let's see a little bit more information about this. Um, uh, you can see that what we have retrieved are, are the different ranks and that now the preferred rank is associated with the latest one. Even though, as we see, well, I don't think that uh, so many people, like 100,000 people went away from Los Angeles in 2018. I lived there and I can assure you that the prices of, of renting were very high, so maybe many people left, but it looks like a lot of people. In any case, if you are skeptical on where these things are coming from, let's check the references, right? So this is the next slide. Um, uh, sorry, the next question that we are gonna do. And for uh, doing uh, this, like the query looks a little, a little bit complicated, but it's nothing, with, if you have the cheat sheet in front of you, it's actually very simple. You just have to take the node, which is Q65, right? And then get the population with the PS uh, statement. It's exactly the same thing as we had done before. This is basically the same query that we had before. The only thing that we are asking is like, oh, by the way, uh, from PS and from the statement node, get me also the reference node. That is the prop was derived right from, and uh, the P854, which is the reference URL. You see that sometimes I I do not remember all these uh, properties, so I just put the the uh, this in my queries to even make make my life a little easier. And I'm using the the service label because it's easier to retrieve the labels from each resource that way. Um, so we are just doing this and this and getting the reference value. The query is exactly the same that we had before and just adding the reference. So let's see what the results are. 
just waiting a little bit and let's run it okay so you can see the sources from each of the queries and you can see that this is from the census.gov so which it is a reliable source no because it's a public open data from los angeles data.census.gov and uh, data.gov is actually a decent source so even though it, it's a little uh weird uh then it looks good so we can trust it i know actually the one from 2018 is from factfinder.census.gov which also um looks from um I don't know whether it's as, as reliable uh, as data.census, but it also looks from the census.gov page and it may be reliable. So we would have to double check, but in case you don't trust a, a given source, um, you can also use this mechanism to filter out from your Sparkle queries. All right. And I think I, I do not have much time left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. Um, this is uh, basically the same thing I've shown you uh, with the queries uh, themselves. So now we are able to show the URL, which is quite powerful, and uh, data scientists in particular will be very grateful to, to this uh, tool. Then uh, one thing that you can also do, which is very, very cool, is that you can use uh, the Sparkle endpoint capabilities that they have over there to even plot your results and i actually wanted to show you so let's let's do this I'm, i think i still have a few minutes so from the results over here um i can select here and say okay uh let's do this as a bar chart and then plop it's even more beautiful than the one that i had <laughs> you can see that the problem with this chart is that i have many empty years because i don't have data points for all these years over here and then uh from the latest years then yes and and i do have them and you can also see the source uh so it's plotted by source this is even better than the visualization i had in the slice because it's coloring by by source which is pretty pretty cool and the only thing is that it's aggregating too because it doesn't know how to plot it uh, otherwise but it's very cool no because now you can do um, you can embed this visualization. See, it's like a half a second to produce this. So you can embed this visualization in your web page in case you are interested in. Um, oh, it came out of this. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with my presentation, hopefully. Um, so other thing, another thing that you can do is, uh, for example, plot um, do geo geospatial based uh, queries such as this one which is plotting the population for all cities in the us but i'm going to, to take only the truthy statements that is the latest statement available for population for each city in um in the us so uh, basically uh, basically i think this is i can't remember what this i think maybe this is something like city in the us because of course there is there is a, ta a, a taxonomy for this and the 1082 is the value for the population and p625 is the coordinates so let's see this query and if you click on execute this may be a little slower um this may be a little slower because there are a lot of cities in the united states so it may take a little bit of time but now it's already plotting the results and here you have see so each point is where would it would appear in a map so now we can come here and say show me a map please and then using all the information that i've seen in the results that is 20,000 results i hope i have not blocked my computer by doing this because i used to do this in my own machine this is another machine and i don't know how reliable it is uh -oh. so it's trying to plot 20,000 results okay i'm gonna uh, okay at least i can come back to the presentation but this may happen right if your machine is not <laughs> powerful enough you know what we are gonna do is is uh, do the query again but filtering by number of results so i hope wikidata has not banned me for doing that query or my internet connection has stopped working because of that 
Oh, oh. Come on, Miss Wikidata. All right, well, if you add a filter to the query, which would be something some instead of order by that, oh, here it has, uh, it's rendering. Da, 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 da. I think I am still okay by time that we can do this and add, come on, filter. Uh, no, it's not filter, sorry, it's a limit. Uh, limit and we do, okay, I'm gonna be good. I'm just gonna plot 100. Um, and then we, if you in the map, then, okay, now it's only plotting 100 points. But you can see that well, it shows this area in particular. But you can do this type of queries, no? If you're if you're not uh, trying to be as aggressive, oops, what is going on? Okay, now I selected something, but and you can see that point and also the population that they have of that point, which is pretty cool. If you have a better machine than me, then um, you can issue the twenty thousand results without your machine complaining or uh, bugging. All right, and. I'm almost reaching the end of my presentation, um, but uh, well, this is what I was able to produce, right? And and also you can see where Wikidata has actually holds. Like there are no no, I I doubt that there are no cities uh, around here, right? Uh, so this is additional information that could be added. And another thing that we can do, but we are not doing the interest of time, is that you can also check things like, oh, well, now let me see which classes can be instances as well in Wikidata. And this is an example of, it's a little bit more curiosity of things that, uh, that are seen both as a class and as an instance. So for example, here you have a Boeing 747, which is of a, an instance of the class artifact model, and but it's also um, a subclass of uh, Boeing 747. And some of these may be modeling issues that the community is still taking into account, and some of them may be just different perspective, different perspectives clashing on on the, on, on the modeling of the knowledge graph itself. Although in, in some cases it can be even correct modeling because for example, uh, I don't know, temperature. Temperature can be a property and a subject of some measurement, no? And it can be both like a property and an instance at the same time. So there are cases where you, you have these weird uh, uh, things and you just have to, to deal with it. So sum him up, and this is my last uh, slide. I hope that I convinced you today, uh, showing you that Wikidata is uh, quite a large knowledge graph. It has like over 90 million items, uh, almost 100, sorry, million items with more than 6,000 properties, a very extensive uh, taxonomy of classes, and more than 4,000 data sets already incorporated into it. It has an awesome Sparkle endpoint. It's free. Um, it's collaborative, so you can contribute to it and improve it uh, while you are using it multilingual um it collects all the structured data and it has uh, many well many many applications which i did not have time to to show you but if you look wikidata applications the community have like tons tons of uh, tool ready applications so you don't have to do a sparkle queries yourself um of course if you want a very particular expressivity of certain things then you have to go through that route and finally a thriving community of contributors right so this was some stats that i took um, a few um, a few months ago but uh, uh, 20 million edits by users right and even though it, it many many of the edits are bots there are a lot of edits by users that co create and contribute um, the errors that it may have been done by automated tools. And uh, with this, I would like to end my presentation. So I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, it was a really wonderful presentation. Um, we actually had a couple of questions uh, appeared, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to wait uh, till the end because well, everyone, including me, was really following along your tutorial. So, and now I uh, give you some questions. Um, I think we can start with um, a somewhat like a simpler question to answer. So, from uh, Liliana, um, mm -hmm. um, she asked, uh, "Thank you for this wonderful presentation." Um, and then um, 
what about like updating the data sets? So Liliana has um like for example, if Liliana has some data um mm -hmm. that you know could be the contribution to the wiki data, then mm -hmm. how would you recommend to clean and then upload to the wiki data? Right. Here where here's where sometimes um the tricky part comes. So the first thing is that you should make sure that the data that you are uploading is not already there, right? Mm. That is that uh, you have to make sure that you know how to link your the entities that you are describing to the entities that already exist in Wikidata. If I were to um, add observations, summary observations, for example, about the weather, uh, big storms in Madrid, uh, if I upload a new entity for Madrid, then the, it's not going to work very well, no? So you have to make sure that you find the city uh, that you're interested in and then you find the properties. If the properties do not exist, you probably can propose new ones um, or they will be reconciled by the community. I wouldn't be too worried about that, but you have to make sure that mm -hmm. you know how to link entities. Once this is done, um, there is a, a mechanism to actually um, well, if you have your your stuff uh, put into triples, um, where you can just go and dump everything uh, as a statements, there is a, an interface called Quick Statements, and there you can basically say, I have this table of annotations, I mm -hmm. have transformed it to RDF, so you have to make an effort to transform it you know, to RDF following their data model, and mm -hmm. then they will ingest it. That is one way. Another way is, uh, of course, if you have a lot of data, this will take a little bit more time. Is go to the UI for um, the thing that you want to describe and edit it yourself manually. That, of course, mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. Or another way is also to create a bot, uh, which is something that we have done in the past and we are still um, doing. The only thing is that you have to get it approved by the community so they know, you know, you're not spamming. Um, and then once you get your approval for your bot, you can, uh, for example, push um, updates at a regular basis, say, stating, well, you know, I found another data set, or this is the update of the month of my data set, and this bot actually addresses this. I know uh, of uh, at least one case in which there was a bot dedicated only to updating a single indicator for cities for all over the country every i think it was uh, every two months or every one month or at a uh, stable time um, every month and that's the only thing it did right it only updated a single triple but um, it depends on the scope of what you want to do okay thank you yeah um i think liliana has been done some reconciliation of the data with open refine um mm -hmm. yeah so uh, thank you for sharing the detail, the mechanism. Um, well, speaking of that, you know, like data, um, I think maybe we can address our Arvan's question here. So in terms of the data reliability, uh, mm -hmm. what is your experiences so far with the fake data and then data uh, vandalisms? Mm -hmm. So one thing that uh, the creator of Wikidata said in, in many uh, places, uh, well, well, while he was doing uh, his presentation, Danny, um, is that uh, Wikidata is not about the truth, right? It was, it's about representing different views from the community. Mm -hmm. That said, um, I think the, the risk here is the same risk as uh, you would have in Wikipedia. So I, my experience is that I have not seen a lot of vandalisms, but mm -hmm. there are concepts in Wikidata that may be polemic and uh, that have been locked and that can be contributed by only by certain curators from the community. In particular, um, well, I can show you actually. You are still seeing my screen, no? Yes. So if you go, if you go to the uh, Wikidata, what is it? Wikidata.org, and you go to a page uh, that may have. So see, you see that I'm not logged in, right? Um, but if you see things like, um, let's see, Los Angeles, which is the one, Angeles City in California, you will see that, mm -hmm. uh, let me see if it changes, but usually there is like a small lock. Um, 
let me see, see this thing. So from concepts, mm -hmm. it says this, this one is protected. Uh, this page has been semi-protected and they, well, there is a page where they explain what this means. It means that to, in order to prevent some of these attacks, some of these pages are semi-protected. But for example, if you go to my page and actually if you look yourself, you are probably here because all the, the uh, DVLP is here. My page, I'm sure it's not, it's not protected. So research and go here and I can see, I can edit it. <laughs> I'm not even logged in, but it, everyone can edit it. So there are pages that are, uh, that are, that are protected and there are pages that they have seen that are like low risk. No? But if you see, um, I mean, actually, if you look yourself, I'm sure that uh, if you have published a paper and that paper has ended up in DVLP or some of these crawlers, um, you will find that you have a Q node and you didn't know it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so speaking of that in relation to Wikipedia, um, can you just clarify that the uh, whether the uh, Wikipedia data is now used to indirectly populate DBpedia as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually have a slide for this um, because this is part of the architecture which I did not have time to, to show, but um, well, initially, initially, um, Wiki, uh, as far as I know, in, in the very earlier stages, Wikidata drank from Wikipedia. It had some, some, um, like the initial stages of the knowledge graph, they were populated from that, from there. However, now some of the info boxes in Wikipedia actually are fed from Wikidata. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the, the structure um, that they follow, right? That uh, uh, Wikipedia is crowdsourced and, and then bots converted into knowledge graphs such as DBpedia. But here you have the web plus a lot of people con and bots contributing to Wikidata and now it feeds into Wikipedia. So yes, it is in this direction now, it has reversed. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, since, you know, this is like an open, uh, open data and then contributed by, you know, like anyone in the world, as you said. So I suppose there is, when, uh, when the entity title assigned, there are no certain protocol. So do you, um, can you speak to that, like how, how you overcome, how do you overcome with that, you know, noise data in the, you know, entity title and extra. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't understand the question very well. What is it being asked? Um, so like, the, you know, any people can assign the entity title, right? But there is no like, like standard protocol in assigning, you know, name of the entities. So like mm -hmm. when, when naming entity, how, how is it controlled? Oh, right. So if I understood correctly, you mean, you are asking about the Q node naming, right? And I know, um, well, that they, they oh, oh, the labels for this. Well, the labels of this, uh, you can come here and edit it. So uh, in all the language, in, in all the languages, right? So right, right. There is, but if, if, there is... if you know every you know anyone can contribute to that, if you know someone actually <laughs> assign um, like the name with a typo or some, you know, like um, not correct name. How, how mm -hmm. does that? Well, yeah. in the end, in the end, all the risk of crowdsourcing are the same in, as in Wikipedia. However, um, there are curators, right? So you can also come and, and come to the history of the page where mm -hmm. you can see how, who did uh, what. In fact, for example, I changed, I changed uh, uh, certain things in. Mm -hmm. In, in this page, but you can see that, for example, the OR, ORKG actually mm -hmm. added some of the some of the things in this uh, in in this page. So you can mm -hmm. see who did what, and you have the same the same way that you would have it in Wikidata. You have mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. all the contribution all the contributions for from the community. Uh, however, I must say that when you ask queries to the knowledge graph. Mm -hmm you do not have this uh, this information like the uh, mm. like who has changed uh, uh, everything in the history right because mm -hmm. well it's uh, it's uh, separated in a different database actually if i go to the architecture um mm -hmm. this is 
this is the, how it works. So you have Wikibase and mm -hmm. you have the Sparkle endpoint. And Wikibase is actually reflecting all the things that are being edited into the Sparkle endpoint, which is what you query, right? Mm -hmm. But for uh, browsing and showing you the pages that I was just showing you before, mm -hmm. this relies on the Wikidata API and also the bots go through the Wikidata API so they can collect the contributions. Mm, I see, I see. That's that's good to know. So it's it's a separate um, data. Um, well, and just yeah. just to clarify one thing, um, all these extra slides that I have here with the architecture and also some applications for managing Wikidata, which I did not have time because, um, I, well, I only had forty five minutes. They they are open and uh, you are welcome to. I mean, you're welcome to download them. Um, and browse them uh, for additional information. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I actually wanted to ask more questions because we have a lot of questions from audience, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I think it's about the time um, to wrap up. Um, yeah, well, really appreciate um, giving this wonderful presentation about the Wikidata and then how to exploit the power of the Wikidata. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. If you have um, other questions, feel free to send me an email and, yes. and I'll be happy to answer them as, as much as I can. I think you have my email in the beginning. Yes, yes. Um, I think on your slide you have your email, right? Um, oh, not really. Um, maybe oh. I the flyer. Mm. Yeah, it's it it should be over there. Otherwise, um, I can I can write it here. You know, it's something. It's like Daniel dot uh, yeah. at where is the at in this keyboard? Ah, oh, there you go at upm dot es. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So please, anyone who has a further question, uh, please feel free to reach out to him uh, with this email. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, I, well, I suppose uh, this recording will be uh, shared um, after this webinar is done. So yeah, anyone can again, you know, like rewatch and then, you know, like get, reach mm -hmm. out to you. All right. Then thank you for having me and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, thank you so much. And then thank you for everyone uh, joining us. Thank you. I'd like to, um, to thank Dr. Daniel Garijo Verdejo for presenting this very interesting webinar. I also want to thank Dr. Inkyung Choi for moderating the session. I want to remind attendees that one of your many ACES member benefits is complimentary access to all webinars. A recording of today's webinar and a copy of the slides will be posted to the ACES website by tomorrow and will be available to all ACES members and paid registrants. Within 24 hours, attendees will receive an email with the recording of the webinar and a survey. I encourage you to complete it within seven days. Again, I'm Aminta Dawson with the ACES staff, and I thank you for attending today's webinar. This concludes the session. Thank you. Thank you.